Joining me from Vancouver, Green Party leader Elizabeth May, Conservative National Defense critic James Bazan is in Winnipeg and in Montreal, Alain Lavadere, the NDP foreign affairs critic. So first question to you, Mr. Bazan. I know the Conservatives and many experts are critical of the Liberals for pulling the CF-18s out of the air war, but are you okay with tripling our Canadian Special Forces trainers and keeping our surveillance and refuelers in the coalition? We said right from the start that we supported a more robust train mission. We supported uh, increasing humanitarian relief and, and the, the Liberals are continuing on with the, the path on humanitarian relief that we started with uh, close to a billion dollars that we committed as government uh, to refugee and, and uh, displaced people's support. But we're still extremely uh, disappointed that we're not leaving the CF-18s in the fight. We still didn't receive a single reason why Canada should not continue on in the air combat mission. Uh, so it's okay to fuel the bombers and paint targets for the bombers and find targets, but uh, they never gave reason why Canada had to stop bombing. And uh, we are the fifth largest contributor to the bombing campaign, uh, fourth out of the coalition partners, not counting the United States. And uh, that is significant. And as we've seen, because Canada's withdrawing, that responsibility is now shifted on to other allies and that's not the Canadian way and it's hurt our reputation internationally. Ms. Lavadere, although the Prime Minister says this is a non-combat mission, Canada's top general Jonathan Vance says our commandos are actually going to go to the front line with Kurdish soldiers, they're going to be painting targets for airstrikes. So how isn't this combat when even General Vance acknowledges that they're likely to be engaging Islamic State militants? Absolutely. It does look like a combat mission. And it's rather funny because, you know, the Liberals pre-election were saying we need clarity about that, whether or not it's a combat mission. And now they're saying it's a non-combat mission, but it's, it's going to be more of the same of what we've done, except in fact, triple. And, and indeed, General Van said it would be dangerous. We've already lost a military per personnel, uh, Sergeant Douaron, uh, on the front line, and now we're going to have even more boots on the ground, essentially. Uh, something many of our allies are rather worried about. And we don't have either uh, straight parameters about, you know, what we will consider as success for tra training, what are the midterm objectives, or anything like that. So, open ended underground mission, a slippery slope. So, Miss May. Uh, the Tories and now the Liberals uh, keep saying this isn't combat, but look at last December when we helped the Kurds in a major Islam to fight off a, a, a major Islamic State assault. Clearly that's yeah. combat. I think we need to look at this with a historical perspective. And uh, contrary to what James Bazan just said, Canada has not always stepped up with these coalitions of the willing. Uh, Canada very, and I think Canadians are grateful that uh, Canada did not get involved with George Bush's war in Iraq. A lot of the consequences, the complete complicated morass of a mess that we have in Syria today, the creation of Islamic State or Daesh is directly a consequence of these blunders of geopolitical enormity of the Bush invasion of Iraq, which the conservatives wanted us to go into. Now that we're looking at the situation, and you're quite right, the, the, the mission as now described does not involve bombing, and I completely support taking the CF-18s out of the region. But a, an aerial bombardment mission is bound to make things worse. And I think that's part of the problem for the Prime Minister is he's unwilling to say that we disagree with the mission that our allies are engaged in. So we're helping a mission that's not likely to succeed. We're trying to expand. So in broad strokes, very good to hear, more diplomacy, more intelligence, more effort to end the conflict. But the reality of boots on the ground is yes, that the uh, the, the, the Canadian troops who are going to be working with the, the Kurdish Peshmerga are clearly going to find themselves in combat situations. Our bombers uh, were welcomed by the Kurdistan regional government. They've said on numerous occasions that, that our uh, CF-18s have helped save lives. They have helped defeat the enemy. And look at how well they were used, and good thing we had them there, uh, to help support the Kurdish Peshmerga and our Special Operation Forces when they were overrun in December. And it was Canadian CF-18s that took out uh, the, the ISIS terrorists who were, who were coming at them. Right now, the, the Kurdish Peshmerga are our friends, but um, eventually they, they may end up being our enemies in the sense that 
um, the Turks don't like them. And what happens if there is an independent Kurdistan and then the Turkish Kurds and the Kurds in other parts want to uh, become part of that? Isn't that, a, isn't that a geopolitical problem that nobody seems to have thought through? And, and it's an issue, and that's why we also have to be very, very careful with this plan to give arms to the Kurds. Uh, we have to be very vigilant to make sure that those arms cannot be uh, fall into the wrong hands or be used to other ends than uh, fighting ISIS. But I want to, to come back on the issue of how we're going to win that war. And, and it relates to the Kurds, too. Uh, first, ISIS could spread in Iraq and in Syria because of the chaos in Syria and because of the very difficult situation in Iraq that indeed is, is an inheritance from um, we got from the war in Iraq, uh, George Bush's uh, war. So we need to work on reconciliation in Iraq, on good governance, and try to find a solution to the uh, civil war in Syria. I was happy to hear Minister Dion say, you know, we're going to put more diplomatic efforts. Uh, it's going to be a good, great challenge, too, because under the Conservatives, Canada lost so much reputation in the region. But I was surprised that on other issues like fighting radicalization, uh, preventing foreign fighters from going uh, into Syri Syria or Iraq, which are part of the mandate the UN has given us, uh, or almost nowhere to be seen. And those are also very, very important uh, steps to address that issue. And finally, Ms. May, well, earlier on the show, the International Development Minister said the government is reconsidering funding the United Nations Works Agency that helps Palestinian refugees. And we know that uh, some of the most displaced people in the region are Palestinians, particularly in Syria. Mm -hmm. uh, the funding that the Harper government had cut, do you think that is a good idea? Oh, absolutely. I think we need to be much more in the in the region, and particularly in the in the uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We need to be seen as uh, a bridge. We need to be seen as, since we are basically soft middle power, we need to be able to talk to everybody and extend humanitarian help where it's needed. Mr. Bazen, I have to ask you: uh, Should the government uh, renew the funding for the UNRWA? I think not, because uh, there was, uh, you know, enough documentation to show that the UNRWA has provided funding uh, directly and indirectly to Hamas fighters. Uh, the same thing was asked of uh, the government that they've announced that they're not going to be at all discriminatory in how they uh, issue relief dollars in Syria and the region. We don't want to see single taxpayer dollar going to the support uh, of jihadi terrorists. And so I don't care if they're, if, if they're Hamas, I don't care if they're Hezbollah, I don't care if they're ISIS. We should, not make, we, we should make every conscious effort to ensure that dollars are being spent on those that are the most vulnerable, those that are being targeted by these terrorists, and not those that are responsible for this war. Well, first, one of the basic principles of humanitarian assistance, and if it, we want it to be effective, is that it has to be neutral and impartial. On UNRWA, uh, I, I rose in the House to ask that we renew uh, funding for UNRWA. Last year, when the UN asked Canada to recommit to UNRWA, they said that otherwise they would have to close schools. So if they close schools, you, you find yourselves with thousands of young Palestinians who have no future, no schools, are hanging out in the streets, and are prime target for recruitment by the jihadists. So we don't want to produce more jihadists, we just want to produce less. Thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate you coming in to speak to us on these issues. Thank you, Bob. Thank you.